Virtual Machine Manager is probably the best VM software you can get on Linux, and it's open source too. Using it, you can create and run any number of virtual machines, emulating other operating systems like Android and Windows 10 to test software, play games, and more. Hi, this is Phil from Make Tech Easier, and this is how to create and run virtual machines on Linux. Virtual Machine Manager is one of the best hypervisors available on the Linux desktop. It's a well-rounded, well-performing piece of software QMU KVM virtualization to take virtualization on your Linux desktop to the next level. How to install Virtual Machine Manager. To install Virtual Machine Manager, simply enter the following commands in the terminal. sudo apt install virt manager or if you're in a Fedora flavored distro, sudo dnf install vert manager. From there, you can open your applications menu and either look for or search for virtual machine manager. Alternatively, you can run it from the command line with the command vert manager. Creating a virtual machine. Click on the icon, the application will open and you'll be greeted with a screen that looks like this. The next thing you'll want to do is get hold of the ISO files that you want to use to create your virtual machines. You can use any Linux distro that you would like, Windows virtual machines, or you can even follow online tutorials and get a macOS virtual machine running. Remember where you're storing the ISO files. Store them anywhere that makes sense to you, but do so in some sort of folder. This tutorial will take you through creating a Linux virtual machine in a variety of flavors. The first thing to do is to click the icon in the upper left corner. This is the icon to create a new VM. You'll see a message confirming we would like your VM installed to initiate. Leave it on local install media, ISO image or CD-ROM, and then click forwards. On the next screen, click browse, and this will bring you to a screen that only has one default path, verlib libvert images. You can add another one by clicking the little plus at the bottom left corner. Having clicked the plus, name the folder, whatever you would like. This is your ISO files folder, so name it something that'll help you remember that. Click browse again, this will bring you to a screen where you can navigate to your ISO files folder and choose that as a storage path. Navigate to wherever you're storing your ISO files, click open in the top right corner, and then click finish. Now your new storage path should appear in the sidebar. Click it, select the ISO file you want to use and click choose volume. Unless you have an ISO file from a lesser known distro, Virtual Machine Manager will mostly pick up which operating system you have. Now you can set your virtual memory and processors. Virtual Machine Manager will configure a default amount based on the OS it detected in the previous screen, or it will give you some kind of default. You can change this to whatever you would like, but keep in mind, if you go below the default amount, things may not run well. Choose your memory amounts and click forwards. The next screen is for choosing the storage path. You can keep the default, which is var lib libvert images, or you can create another path using the same steps as above. You can also choose to disable storage for the virtual machine, which comes in hand if you're using a system like Kali, Linux, or Tails, which generally don't need storage. So there's pretty much no point in creating any and using up disk space. Set your storage amount and click forwards. Now you can set the name of your virtual machine and also change any other configurations you'd like by checking the customized configuration before install checkbox. If you'd like to add other storage devices, other network hardware, or change the way you can remotely access the virtual machine, that's the box to check to do it. You can also change those settings later, but it's a little bit more convenient to do it before the install. You can also specify your network connection information. You can leave it at the default of NAT or change it to something else. Something to note, even using NAT, you can still connect to these virtual machines over the network using the VIRBR0 network adapter that was created when you installed Virtual Machine Manager. You can run virtual service headlessly and connect to them remotely at that IP address using SSH or some other means. Click Finish to start your install. You may be prompted with a virtual network is not active message. If so, click Yes to start the network. You're now up and running. I've had great success with running a wide variety of guest OSs in a virtual machine manager, so I encourage you to check out some of the best Linux distros using your new hypervisor. There are also some advanced features of virtual machine manager that we will cover in a later video. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. That's all for now. See you next time.